Welcome to the Spy Collection. I'm Anastasios and in this episode we will look at a document. This Interim Intelligence Analysis Review from August 27th, 1945. As you can see from the insignia and the name, this was published by the General Staff Intelligence, GSI, of the 21st Army Group of the United Kingdom and its objective was to provide officers with an interim assessment of the World War II situation. The 21st Army Group existed from July 1943 and until August 1945. This makes this document even more unique since it is one of the last intelligence reviews for this military group. The 21st Army Group was a very large formation with over 1 million personnel under it. It was the command of the British 2nd Army and the 1st Canadian Army and its area of operation was Northern France, Luxembourg, Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany. Now the first attachment in this intelligence report was a map that they managed to obtain and translate from the Axis forces. This map that you see here. The map was titled We Fallen gegen England which is German for we are marching against England and it describes an invasion plan of the Axis forces to England. The full history of this is the first section of the intelligence review. I'm not going to read everything of this chapter but here is the introduction. Shortly after it had become unfashionable to think about washing and the Siegfried line, the German equivalent was at its height of popularity. We are marching against England was the phrase of the day and in the offices of the Wehrmacht plans were being drawn up to make this phrase a reality. From recently discovered documents, it is possible to form an idea of how the project was to be carried out. The constant alternations in detail, however, make it impossible to say this was the operation order for the invasion of England. What follows concerns mainly one such plan, or at least that portion of it affecting the 16 and 9 armies. The picture is incomplete and executed in outline only, but its interest is not thereby diminished. In case you wonder, the music you were hearing in the background was the Second World War German military Wie fahren gegen England. Now if we move to the second chapter, This one explains how coal was the key to the rehabilitation of Germany, again including a nice map showing the German coal fields. Please note, this map was from the Ministry of Economic Warfare and it was from August 25, 1945, so just three days prior to this classified publication. The next chapter has more of a historic and geopolitical strategic view. Talking about the German industry and the Nazi state. This intelligence product goes through the history of the German industrial developments and how this changed under the Nazi rule and what can Allied forces consider to support the rehabilitation of Germany. Following that, we have the blood from stones. An intelligence product in a similar foundation to the previous one. This one goes through the financial exploitation of the occupied territories by the German state during the early days of the Second World War. It talks about several specific use cases, policies, as well as retrospective analysis. For example, for example here you see paragraphs on the occupation expenses, inflation and the black market, custom duties. And the final section is about the German administration in Greece that they found it very difficult to achieve any positive results due to the extremely complicated political situation there. Next we have a follow-up of a previous intelligence report, the Back to the Reich, the 1945 edition. This edition focuses explicitly on the historical development of the Second World War in Czechoslovakia and the Sudeten problem. Sudeten was referring to ethnic Germans living in the Czechoslovakia region. And as we move forward 
and we're getting to the end of this document, we have the nature of an insurrection. This is an analysis of the July 20th, 1944 assassination attempt of Adolf Hitler while inside the Wolfslayer field headquarters near Rustenburg. The interesting part here is that the report gives the perspective of how the British military reacted to this, which is something not frequently discussed. And then we have the Manchurian background. That is an intelligence report on the historical and military developments in the Manchuria region. The overlapping geographic area of Northeast Asia that you see in the map that is attached to this report over here. This short report talks about the alliances and rivalries over the years and this map makes it easier to digest this content. And moving to the final part we have the collector's piece. As the description says, in July 1937, the following letter found its way into Hitler's chancellery was read and marked no further action. It is reproduced here as a curious exercise in bilingual writing. This last collector's piece reminds us all of the importance of linguists in the intelligence community, something that has been mentioned in several episodes of the spy collection. And in conclusion, the artifact of this episode showed us once again how military officials were informed of numerous subjects through secret intelligence products like this one. Of course, they couldn't publicly say what they knew, but as you saw, they had a pretty holistic overview of the situation, and the same applies to this day, and it's why nothing is as it seems.